And we got another one fresh off the auction block, this one of the non-runner variety. And to be specific, this is a 2012 Hyundai Genesis Coupe. Hey, 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 how's it going? Do it yourself first. So yeah, I bought yet another car from the auction. This thing just got dropped off. I did not inspect this in person before I bought it. I just bid on it online. There were some pictures and a small description saying non-runner. That was about it. And I decided to buy it. I have a good idea what's wrong with it, why it's a non-runner but we're about to find out for sure. All right, so as some of you may know, these cars come with the famous, for all the wrong reasons, uh, Theta 2 engines. Now this one's got the 2.0 liter turbocharged engine on this Hyundai Genesis, but you know, usually the Theta 2 engines that are famous are in the Hyundai Sonatas, Kia Optimas, and other similar makes and models. And th those are 2.4 liter and naturally aspirated. All right, now why do I say the famous Theta 2 engine? Well, as some of you know, the Theta 2 engine, the 2.4 liter one especially, is known for having bottom end issues, which is basically catastrophic engine failure. Now as to why that happens, according to Hyundai, uh, there's, this is due to a poor manufacturing or a mistake in the manufacturing process where they leave a lot of metal shavings around. Those metal shavings start uh, clogging up the oil galleys. When that happens, you starve the engine of lubrication. And then that's usually what happens is that you get a rod knock, which basically means the, the rod bearing did not get a proper lubrication. It wore out prematurely. Now there's too much space, too much clearance in there, and it's knocking around when, it's, uh, when the crankshaft is traveling up and down. Now, other things can happen, uh, like a seized rod bearing where it fuses to the crankshaft itself. You know, there's no lubrication, so friction builds up, a lot of heat builds up, and then that rod bearing fuses to the crankshaft itself. You know, their cylinder walls can get damaged due to a lack of lubrication. They can, uh, you know, get scored up pretty bad as to where there's no compression inside the engine. And, you're, and of course, your engine can seize as well due to all of these issues that we just talked about. But as far as what's wrong with this engine, well, we don't know yet for sure, but let's find out. And of course, as it's the case with all auction vehicles, our car's battery is dead. So let's hook up our Jump starter, and then let's crank and listen to the engine. What do we got, a sewing machine in there? So you heard it, turns out I was wrong. We don't have a 2.0 liter two turbocharged engine. We got a sewing machine in here disguised as a turbocharged engine. All right, so as you just heard, our engine sounds just like a sewing machine. Now that's a distinct sound an engine makes when it has next to no compression. Also. It, the sound was pretty monotone. It stayed the same all the way across. Usually when you have compression in some of the cylinders, uh, that sound goes up and down when it gets to the, when the cylinders that have compression, uh, when the piston is going up in those cylinders. But on ours, it didn't. It sounded like none of the cylinders had any compression. Now, a couple of things can cause this. Obviously, the engine failures that Hyundai is famous for can cause this, but other things can cause that. You know, you could have uh, a warped cylinder head, Bad head gasket, warped cylinder block, due, you know, this could all obviously happen due to a severe overheating uh, case. You could have a problem with the timing, timing belt, timing chain, the timing belt uh, tensioner, guides, those could all go bad and then cause the timing to be off. So when the cylinder, uh, the piston is going up in the cylinder, uh, the valves could be open, so you can't really compress the, the, the air fuel mixture that's going in that cylinder. Uh, of course, that's on the good side. On the bad side, if you have a broken timing belt or a timing belt, timing belt or a timing chain, the piston, if it's an interference engine, could hit the valves, bending them, and therefore you're not gonna have compression now either, in addition to having to rebuild at least the top of your engine. But I personally think we can sort of definitively rule out overheating issues. We have coolant in our radiator. Also, there's no sign of uh, the oil mixing with the coolant. Same goes for when we check our oil. We got super dirty oil, but we got no coolant mix with it at least. You know, our radiator hoses look okay. There's no signs of damage to the hoses due to overheating issues. The radiator looks okay. Everything actually looks really, really clean. Uh, also our, uh, our hood, the bottom of our hood looks okay. Usually when you have overheating issues, you got coolant leaking out of the hoses or the radiator. They splash all over the place. They leave residues and stuff, but I don't see any sign of that. All right, so if we can tentatively rule that out, the next thing could be a problem with the timing. Now. There are top to center timing marks on the crankshaft that I can access easily on this engine. What I'm gonna do is actually next to remove the, the valve cover, uh, line up the marks on the camshaft, actually inspect the timing chain, since this car comes with a timing chain and not a belt. Uh, make sure it's not loose or broken. And then if it's not, then we'll line up the marks on the camshaft gears and then compare them to the marks on the crankshaft gears, make sure they're all aligned and all that. 
All right, so first we're gonna remove this cover, which is held in by these 10 millimeter bolts, it looks like. There's that. Next, we'll remove the connector from our coils and then remove our coils. These are also seem to be held in by a 10 millimeter bolt. Now it'd be funny if there are no spark plugs. Well, there they are, so not that funny. But yeah, another thing that could cause you have no compression is if your spark plugs are missing. All right, next we'll undo this bracket. Again, 10 millimeter bolt. Next, we'll undo this wire harness held in by these two 10 millimeter bolts. All right, next you probably wanna get this wiring harness out of the way by undoing a couple of connectors, two up here and then there's two on the bottom. It looks like it's kind of hard to get to, but what I'm gonna do is try to cheat a little bit. I'll just undo these connectors with these uh, fuel injectors like that. And then try to just push this out of the way, undo these uh, screws all around this valve cover, remove this breather hose, and then try to get this valve cover off. Next, we'll remove this breather hose for our PCV system. This one on this side as well. And then all the 10 millimeter bolts are around the circumference of this valve cover. It looks like there's about 10 or 12 of them. All right, so now we should be able to get this valve cover Yep, there we go. All right, so here's a closer look at the top of our engine without the valve cover. At first glance, don't, things don't look that bad. Obviously, you know, this thing could be cleaner, but it's actually, it's in pretty decent shape. It's fairly clean. This car has 108,000 miles on it, and you know, it's got some wear on the camshaft lobes, but you know, it's normal amount of wear. You know, you can't really feel it with your fingers, and it's just the normal amount of wear you would expect of a engine with this, this many mile, miles. But if this engine was indeed um, suffered from oil starvation issues, you would see the wear actually underneath these bearing caps because that's where our pressurized oil comes in and lubricates the camshaft bearings. And if, you know, if this was indeed uh, starved of oil and lubrication, you would really see the wear on these bearings underneath. But I'm not gonna open these or remove these camshaft caps just yet because you know if this engine was indeed starved of oil to the point where we have no compression now or low compression we have other issues but again let's not jump ahead of ourselves and check what we came to check in the first place which is our timing chain at first glance you might be able to see a bit of a problem this timing chain cannot be this loose as you can see this is way loose especially on this side and it's going to jump gear it's going to jump the tooth on this gear uh, like this and which actually that's probably what has happened here so it looks like i mean we don't know for sure we can't say for certain whether the bottom end of this engine the cylinder walls all that are still good but what we can say for certain is that the timing is off and like we talked about this could definitely cause you to not have any compression you guys want to know what else is funny as I'm turning this crankshaft to line up the marks, which I really probably shouldn't, because this, yeah, this timing chain is way too loose. I'm gonna stop turning this. I actually feel a little bit of compression in the engine. I mean, not much, but there is some compression. In All right, so it looks like there's a chance we're gonna get real lucky on this. Uh, so if the problem is only the chain tensioner or and or the guides, the timing chain guides, then you know, we would remove this cover, replace those, be on our way, but we can't really do that since uh, we need to make sure that actually the pistons haven't hit the valves. Now, in order to confirm that we indeed the valves are okay, what we need to do is to put, you know, do a leak down test in each cylinder, bring each cylinder down to, to up to top to center on the compression stroke, put shop, shop air in there, then you measure, measure the amount of leak, leak down. If it's, try to figure out where, if you have too much, you try to figure out where it's going out. If it's going out the, intake or the exhaust manifolds, then that indicates a potential problem with those valves. If it's going out the bottom end, it's gonna come out the, the oil dipstick too probably. You can listen for that and that, then that would indicate a problem with the cylinder walls and or piston rings. But I am sort of hopeful that this thing has only jumped a few teeth as to where I can feel a little bit of compression when I turn it by hand. So, you know, that means that usually means that the valves could be spared but we don't know we don't know that for sure we have to go through these tests to confirm that and then also i'm gonna 
before, <laughs> before I do spend money on all of this, uh, it's a very good idea that in the case of these engines, which are known for oil starvation issues to inspect the bottom end. So we'll drop the oil pan, check the bottom end as well. Make sure there's no problems with those either before we go any further to either replacing these or rebuilding the top end. Now let's get to the brass tags. How much did I pay for this at the auction? Why did I buy it? What was my plan for it? And what I'm gonna do with it in the future? Well, I paid for this car, all, all the auction fees and everything, $2,644. And I paid $110 to get it towed here which brings it to $2,754. That's how much I'm into this car right now. And I believe these cars are worth retail price, which means you, know, you sell it to the general public at about eight, dollars $9,000, give or take. Again, this car has the 108,000 miles on it. The body's in really, really good condition, minus this bumper cover, which either my tow truck driver or the people at the auction damaged because it does not look like that in the photos. So someone screwed that up. They're all blaming, blaming each other. I'm out some time and effort to remedy this anyway, but in, again, generally speaking, or, you know, the body again is in really good shape. It's dirty again. The wheels are in good shape. The tires, there's not a curb rash on any of these wheels, which is impressive. The tires are in really good shape. Uh, you know, it's a 2.0 liter turbocharged engine. Looks like it, it's a, it would be a quick, cool, fun car to drive around, current registration, all that jazz. So this would be a good car to sell as retail and that's actually what was my original plan for this car. Now also I should mention that you might be thinking that yeah you get this car for you know twenty six, twenty seven hundred dollars it's worth eighty five to nine thousand dollars that's almost six thousand dollars more than you paid for it there's a lot of room for profit in there but actually not as much as you think because since these engines have such a high failure rate getting another engine is actually quite expensive. This engine especially I believe is a, you know you can get it for maybe thirty five hundred dollars that's how much you have to pay for the engine and there's all these other sorts other expenses, you know, you gotta buy gaskets, you gotta buy, you know, the coolants, oil. There's all sorts of things that will build up and eat into that profit. So there isn't much profit in there. My initial plan was knowing that, hey, this is a Theta 2 engine. It's going for cheap at the auction. There's probably, there's good chance there's a problem with the engine. My initial plan was to actually rebuild the bottom end of these engines. Now, I might still have to do that. <laughs> I, might have to still, I might still have to rebuild the bottom end plus the timing and all that. That remains to be seen. But that was my initial plan, you know, get this engine, open it up, rebuild the bottom end, make some good videos for you guys showing how to rebuild the bottom of these, bottom end of these engines since there is such a high failure rate on these and a used engine is so expensive. Now, I wish I could do more work on this car for you guys right now. Maybe uh, do a leak down test and confirm that uh, the valves are okay at the very least, but I'm in the process of moving all my stuff from the garage down to the shop that he just, watch me build the other week. So, you know, all my tools, the air compressor and everything, they're not easily accessible right now. But stay tuned, this shop is ready. So yeah, if you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification, especially since you missed the party for when I got my one millionth subscriber. There was strippers and blow in there and you don't want to miss that again. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.